you've seen an influx of phone users flocking to certain areas in your town, you're probably looking at people playing Pokemon Go. This simulated reality game really appeals to players like Bryce and Lines, who spent some time playing it since it released in Canada. There's nothing specific, it's just the whole game. Yeah. I just like it all. Some weird stories have come out over the internet of mistakes people have made while playing the game, like driving accidents or broken phones, but Bryson hasn't really seen that in Renfrew. Is a regular person, but I mean, like, you use your phone like a regular phone. I mean, if you're on your GPS to find something, you're not going to be running in the middle of the street. You don't have to run in the middle of the street. You can still look both ways before you cross or not jump off a cliff. I mean, it's pretty common sense to do stuff like that. The game turns local landmarks into zones to get supplies. You need these supplies while you're out in your walks looking for Pokemon. But those locations can also be used to lure Pokemon to you, and at times it lures other players. For Renfrew, Town Hall, the Swinging Bridge, and the CP Train by the Visiting Center are some of the landmarks. All this is traced through GPS and Google Maps. The whole point of the game is to walk around, catch creatures while you walk, and hatch eggs you find along the way. Which are gauged by the distance you've traveled at walking or biking speeds, as driving doesn't work. The one positive overall effect that the game has had is that it's got more people out and around in the town meeting people rather than being glued to their phones at home. There's a lot more people out, I guess. And just go Team Mystic. The game does remind you to be careful of all your surroundings, but why not get out, check it out, see for yourself what it's like, and maybe even get a good walk-in. For Coach Go TV News here in Renfrew, I'm Richard Leboy.